Boom! Go Getters Podcast. Welcome back, everybody. We're joined by Yuri Covington today, a uh, local D1 basketball player. We actually went to school with him when we were younger. But uh, how's it going, man? How you doing today? Chilling, bro. Uh, 5K. <laughs> excited to be here. Feel me? That's what's up, bro. Yo, so uh, so what happened? Like, why did you end up leaving Myers? I remember, like, I heard stories that you were getting some tick as a as a freshman, mm-hmm. and uh, you were doing well. And then something happened with one of the coaches where they stopped playing you. And then then after that, that's where I just remember it kind of fading. And then Yuri transferred to Maryland. So what happened with that? Um, it wasn't even really the coaches not playing me. Because I, I wanted to stay at Myers. Mm-hmm. But my mom wanted to move oh, really? to Maryland. Yeah. So, like, I didn't even want to leave. Damn. So were you competing with the kids, though, when you were at that time? Like, at that time as a freshman, were you competing well or were they above your level? No, I was definitely competing well. Yeah. It was just they were older, had more experience. Type shit. I would just do stupid stuff. But. So how was Maryland? Like, was it different than Myers? Yeah. Was the was game different? different? Like, how did you adjust to that being a Wilkes-Barre kid and then changing and changing in complete different states, different schools, and then having to adapt? Uh, honestly, it wasn't even that hard because, like, in Maryland, the game's a lot faster. And, like, the DMV area, people are just, like, there's just more basketball players. Mm-hmm. So it was just kind of like I was just playing against better players, and it was easier to adapt. But, like, when I first got to Maryland, like, I almost stopped playing basketball for real, for real. Why? Because they put me on JV. Oh, damn. My 10th grade year, yeah. Wow. I moved late, so I came after the tryouts. Mm. And they were like, you can't play varsity. So they put me on JV. And um, the whole year on JV, I never started, like, not one game. Damn. Because they were better than you? or No, they sucked. That's why, yeah, that's why I was about to quit. Um, so, like, every day in practice, the guards, like, I would just fry <laughs> them. Not all of them. A few of them were all right, but, like. The dude who basically the dude who was playing above me, like I would fry him every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The coach would tell me, like, yeah, I see you frying him, but like you're more mature, so we're gonna keep you coming off the bench. So like the whole JV season, I actually loved that team though. That was one of the best teams ever. We went like 17 and one, and the game we lost. I wasn't there. Mm. Wow. I was in PA. Mm. So, <laughs> but we went there, and then um, from there, like the JV team, like when we went up to varsity. Uh, I kind of worked my way up. Like, summer league, I was coming off the bench still, but I was playing more. Mm. And then by the time the season rolled around, I was a point guard. I was a starting varsity point guard. Mm -hmm. And, like, I was playing, but I still wasn't playing my game. So, like, I had finally worked my way back up to where I wanted to be, but, like, I still wasn't playing how I wanted to. I was still really limited in a box. Mm. So... So what do you you think it was favoritism, like, your sophomore year that led them to, like, choose other players over you, given the fact that, I mean, you obviously think that you were better than them? Yeah, honestly, I don't think it was favoritism. I just think they didn't really want me to, like, this random kid from yeah. Pennsylvania to just come in after tryouts mm. and then hop on the team, and it would just be yeah. like, like, who is this yeah. kid? Nobody knows him. Mm. That's odd because teams, I mean, most teams I played on typically love, I mean, and this is football too, but typically loved when out-of-state players came in because it was just something new. Yeah, that is true. But did you, like, did you strategically pick the school or did you guys just land up where your mom wanted to go and then you just went to that, the closest school in the area? Um, My mom strategically picked it out, but not for basketball. Okay. Well, like, for basketball, but, like, you know how moms are, like, academics, sure. yeah, the yeah. area, yeah. And all that. So it was, like, it had the best of everything. It wasn't the best basketball school, but it was, like, the best we could find with, like, the academics she wanted from me. Right. But then, so, like, you talked you were in a box. Like, what do you mean by in a box? Athletically, um, like I just couldn't play the game I wanted. Like I just couldn't take certain shots. I didn't okay. have all the trust from the coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And actually, when I went to this school, before I transferred my senior year, I had no offers or anything. So like I went to my coach. And I was talking to him, and he was like, "These are the schools I think you should contact." And he gave me like eight schools. There's like two D two schools on the list. The mm-hmm. rest of them are all D three. And he's telling you, and he's like, you should contact these schools. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you want me to contact them? And he was like, yeah. And they were all like, n- no Division One schools. So I was yeah. like, I want to play Division One. He was like, I don't think you're good enough to play Division One. He was mm-hmm. like, um, these are the schools I think you should go to. And he had like, bro, he's giving me like, because we're from this area. He's giving me like ESU. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, like that's where I'm from. Yeah. Right. So like, when that happened, that's when I just really knew I was kind of off that school and I just wanted to move. Damn. That's also so interesting. 
Huh? You moved again in, in Maryland, or you stayed at that school? I didn't move, but I transferred. So I in ended Maryland? Up, yeah. Oh, so you would, you played at two different schools there? Yeah. Okay. My senior year, I ended up going to the National Christian Academy. Okay, it's yeah. in Fort Washington. Yeah. Maryland. It's right outside D.C. And, like, they were they were a lot, a lot better. It was just, like, a different level of basketball. Mm-hmm. So it was, like, a basketball to. school that you yeah, decided to go to? Yeah, it was, okay. like, specifically a basketball school. Like, we had coaches coming in the gym for practices, all cool. that. yeah. We were played. We ended up playing uh, Montverde that year. Mm-hmm. So we played Cade, Scotty. Yeah, yeah. That's it's crazy. also odd that he would have you like reach out to colleges on your own. That's right. like that's very yeah. not typical Ooh. of coaches, especially if they fuck with you. You know what I mean? That's pretty odd that they would have you do that. Yeah, that's why I was kind of like just off the school in general because I felt like I came my sophomore year and yeah. like I worked hard. Like I'm always gonna give my best effort. Yeah. So I worked hard and like. I fought my way up to starting, mm. and then he was still, like, just disrespecting me. So yeah. I was like, yeah. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah, Damn. I was really going to earn this guy's respect, so I just got Yeah. Him. I've never heard of somebody say that. I've never heard somebody say that before, that, like, a coach tried to have you make your own recruitment. That's pretty crazy. So now where did you say you moved after that? Uh, National Christian Academy. How was it there? What was your time like there? Uh, he went great. crazy. That's when that's yeah. when everybody started to see, like, he was jumping over two people. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and everybody said it was crazy noise, and even in Wilkes-Barre when you were doing that. Yeah, that was a good time. Uh, met some good people on my team. I met a lot of good friends, made yeah. a lot of good friends on that team. Uh, it was just crazy. Like, so when I went there, it was probably, like, an hour away from where I live. Okay. Plus the D.C. traffic, because it's right mm-hmm. outside D.C., so it would take, like, an hour and a half to get there. So instead of commuting every day, I ended up staying with my coach. Yeah. And then mm. staying with my coach, it was literally just basketball practice, yeah. like rest. So my senior year was really like I was locked in, mm. and we started going to bigger tournaments, and uh, I started playing well. Yeah. Because the coach had a lot of – this coach had a lot of confidence in mm. me. He was just letting me play. So we were playing – I was playing better, and I was yeah. playing better people. Like I was playing – how big of an impact is it to have, like, a coach that actually, like, cares, like, a lot about you in that regard? Because he obviously was pushing you a lot more than your previous coaches. Yeah, it's definitely big. Like, my senior year at NCA, I feel like I just learned a lot more just because of the coach, like, yeah. really wanted me to mm. and really wanted me to improve as a basketball player. Whereas, to, like, at Clarksburg, my sophomore and junior year, it was kind of like, if I got better, it was all on my own. Yeah. Mm. So, yo, bro, did you think, like, during your time at the first school that you transferred to, did you – stopped believing in yourself in a way like did you lose confidence in your ability to play or did you always know like nah I'm, I'm like that and then you proved it to yourself after you transferred I think it was always I knew I was like that but I definitely was like at a certain point I was like I'm just done because I was I actually tried to quit I told my mom I wasn't playing anymore I was like I'm not playing for Clarksburg anymore I'm just gonna play AAU mm. it was like AAU is where you get more offers anyway yeah and she was like you're not quitting high school and playing travel basketball it doesn't make any sense so if not for her, I probably wouldn't have played there my junior year of yeah. high school. Because my thing was, like, I knew I was good, but I felt like me playing there wasn't doing anything for me. So I was just not going to play and go mm. to school and just work out every day and then try to do my thing at AAU. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. I'm not going to lie. Remember that one time you and I played against each other in CYC? Mm-hmm. And I was giving your team crazy buckets. Bro, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I never knew how. But you always had crazy handles. I think it was just your footwork. I don't know what it was, bro. I wish I played more basketball. <laughs> What's that fucking wide receiver? I remember that, Corey. Yeah. Dancing I remember around was on the bench and Corey tried coming up to guard me. He was like, bro, guard him. He can shoot. <laughs> Split gag them real quick. But That's a wild time. Now, when did you say that was? That was I don't even lightning? know. But you used to play football, too, though. Yeah, I played for one year. Yeah. All right. You weren't messing with it? Nah. I definitely just like basketball more. And we practice right next to minor. So it's like mm-hmm. every time I'm playing football, I'm watching people play basketball. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, yo. When you moved to Maryland, did you miss Wilkes-Barre? Yeah, definitely. Just because, like, this was already – this was when I was, like, 16. Yeah. So I already, yeah. like, have my best friends. Like, mm-hmm. I'm already used to Wilkes-Barre. You know what right. I mean? Everybody knows me. I know everybody. And I just moved to a completely different place. Yeah. And it's like everyone's different. Like, the lingo they use, mm. like, yeah, just everything, their demeanors, mm-hmm. the way they interact with each other. So it was just weird adjusting. But, like, once I did, it was fine. But I definitely miss Wilkes-Barre. That's tough, bro. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, all right, go no, ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, like, what is it like tra- or transitioning into, like, going from one school to another school like that, high school-wise? Because I've never had to make a shift like that. So, I mean, you were touching on it a little bit. But what's that like getting to, like, learn or meet new people, like, learn, like, the layout of where you're living and stuff like that? Like, what's that like coming from a place like this? Honestly, I feel like for most people it's probably annoying. Yeah. But, like, 
every time I move, it has to do with basketball. Mm. So, like, I have new teammates. Yeah. I have a new team. I have a new coaching staff. So, like, it's pretty easy for me to adjust because yeah. I have people to, like, lean on a little bit in a way in a place I don't really know too much about. Yeah. No, I experienced that as well, though, because uh, I was going from – Myers, eighth grade, I wanted to go to football, uh, to Valley West to play football because yeah. they had the big football school. There was kids there getting, like, legitimate offers. And um, then I did it again. I moved to, to SEM, and I played at SEM for a while. But I think it was kind of interesting because when I, would, when I would transfer schools, you were the talk of the town. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, everybody was giving you attention, that new athletic kid, like, who's that, who's that, who's that? And I think, for me, it boosted my ego a little bit. Really? Yeah. So did you experience anything like that? Like, you know, you're getting some, you know, you're, you're getting crazy buckets. The girls might start coming up to you in class. Like, did you, did you, were you able to keep your ego in check or, or what's your philosophy like with that? Um, I was definitely able to keep my ego in check. I think for me, it's like, it's more like I want to prove stuff to myself. Mm -hmm. So like people even today will be like, bro, like you can go to the league or da da da. Like I still, I'm, I'm not good enough to go to the NBA right now, but like, I'm going to keep working so I can be one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, like, I think I think that's what, like, keeps me level-headed is, like, I'm never really satisfied and I want to, like, impress myself the most. Mm-hmm. So, so, like, even when I do get a little big-headed, like, it's easy to bring myself back down. You're competing sure. with yourself. It's like yeah. you versus yeah. the man in the mirror. That's, mm-hmm. that's a, I think that's the best way to do it because I think if you're constantly comparing yourself to other people, then. Yeah, it'll drive you crazy. Yeah, it'll drive <laughs> you crazy and, you know, you can never fulfill that void. You mm-hmm. know, there's always the next guy, the next guy that, you know, is really pushing you to compete and, yeah. you know, who might be better than you at that time. So I think um, as long as you're con- continuously competing with yourself in anything, like not only basketball but podcasting or doing mm-hmm. whatever you, you know, football, whatever it might be. I think that's the better philosophy to have. But um, yeah. you ever see uh, Love and Basketball? Yeah, you I know. just watched it like three yeah. days ago. <laughs> I, was, I was watching it with my girl, actually, too. <laughs> and, um, so you remember how his dad was trying to convince him to go to Princeton and mm-hmm. to prioritize his, his education? Yeah. So is that in your head at all? Like, am I, are you thinking, like, all right, so I should prioritize, like, you know, the degree I'm getting or whatever I'm learning, or are you mainly focused on playing basketball? Uh, I'm mainly focused on playing basketball, but, like, as I've gotten older, it's become more important to me. Like, when I first came to school, like, I was undecided, and mm-hmm. I really did not care about school at all. Mm-hmm. Like, right. I just said I was going to be a psych major, so people would stop asking me. Right. But, like, now it's kind of more like, okay, after basketball, what am I actually going to do? Mm-hmm. You're trying to and think I, about that shit. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I want to do something that, like, I won't consider a job. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to major in communication. <coughs> I have to find an alternative at my school because, like, they don't have it there. Mm-hmm. So I have to find an alternative for that. But, like, I think communication is what I want to do now. And it's definitely more important to me, especially because, like, when it wasn't important to me, I was almost ineligible. So I was like, yeah. Really? Gotta, like, you're great? Like, yeah, your grades? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was like, yeah, I got to get back on that. Yeah. That's, that's true. I, I was I would struggle with grades, too, man. I never liked school. Yeah. yeah. I never liked it. I mean, I never wanted to be in class. I never I never did my homework. I was always copying homework off Facts. somebody. <laughs> you know? But that is important because there is going to be a time after basketball. Now, you could probably coach. You could probably do, mm. you know, whatever you do. I think I was reading the other day, bro. Didn't you have a cousin that went to the NBA? He played for the Bulls? Uh, uh, or an nah. uncle? Something like that? Nah, Robert Covington. People would be thinking that's my cousin, low key. Really? It's not my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But my nah, that's definitely true, though. Like, yeah, that shit I is really a, important. I had a cousin. I don't even really know him, but I know he's my cousin. He he plays somewhere. He actually, do you know what the TBT is? Nah. It's like a, it's a tournament that they have every year. Mm-hmm. And it's for like a million or $2 million. And it's wow. just a bunch of pros. Yeah. Or, yeah, like ex-pros, pros. Like, it's a high-level basketball. And he actually just played in that. He had, like, damn. 25 one game. And damn. he was in the three-point contest. He didn't win, but he was in the three-point contest. Damn. And so shout out to him. How do you go on to win that million, then? Like, you just have to be the top team? Like, some yeah. kind of, like, bracket-style tournament? Mm-hmm. You got to win the tournament. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, what? that is nuts, bro. Yeah. Right. What year are you going in now on college? Uh, Junior. So are you still undecided at the moment? Like, on yeah. what you're, like, you're going to major in? I mean, I know what I'm going to major in. I just forget the name. It's, okay. like, it's, it's the alternative for communications. communications. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I just forget what it is. I think that's what Malik's studying, too. Communications? communications? Yeah. Yeah, and I know a lot of people do that. Uh, when's the basketball season start? Uh, I know you were just telling me you got back from uh, your summer camp and whatnot. So how was that going? Tell the people about that a little bit. That was good. A lot of work, a lot of work, bro. I've never been more tired in my life. Yeah. So it's not even close. What's that, like, that balance like, that, like, waking up to go to practice every day? Like, how do you even sustain, like, a social life or, like, work? Do you work? Uh, nah. I did at my old school, yeah. but that was when I was already in the transfer portal. Mm. When you're, like, 
for me personally, when you're on the team, it's like it's just way too much. Yeah, you can, I mean, as a college athlete, like you can't really be. Ex- I mean, some people have to, but you can't really be expected to fit that that schedule. And how do you really ever work as a full time D one athlete? Yeah, it's like a job in itself. Yeah, I mean. literally. Yeah, it's yeah, it's basically like having two jobs and then school on top mm-hmm. of that. Yeah, those papers, bro. Yeah. Up all night. Different. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so what's that like? Um, I just think you have to really love it because if not, like, mm-hmm. you're going to be like, damn, bro, I got to wake up, go to yeah. practice. I'm going to be tired. Then I got mm-hmm. class. Now I got to do my work. And you just have, a, like, you might have an mm-hmm. essay that you've been playing yeah. off that you didn't want to do and you yeah. still don't want to do, but it's due. So you just really have to be like, for me, I just remind myself, like, that I'm actually here. Like, yeah. And that's, like, probably what you always wanted to be doing. You just yeah. didn't know all the shit that came with it. Mm-hmm. What time they got you waking up on, like, average, like, class and practice day? Like, what's your first session looking like? Um, It depends on the day, for real, for real. A few days a week, we might wake up at 8. And then another day, we might not have to wake up till 12. Mm-hmm. So it really just depends on what the schedule is looking like, especially yeah. in the summer, because it doesn't really have to be like, mm. super concrete, because not everyone has, like, a lot of classes. Yeah. And if you do... My classes were all online, so I didn't really have to attend anything. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so. Damn, that's valid, actually. Yeah, yeah. so, like. bed and do all your stuff from there. Yeah, bro. Yeah. It was lit. So, yo, um, so you went to this new this new high school, um, senior year. Yeah. Balled out crazy. And so, how did the coach start to roll in? Like, what was that process like? Like, who was hitting you up, and how did you make your decision to go to William & Mary? Um, so, I, like, in the beginning of the season, um, our team was playing well, mm-hmm. but like I still hadn't have I didn't hear anything from coaches. How about your teammates? Did your teammates have offers at that point, or uh, a few of them? One of my one of my teammates ended up going JUCO. Okay, he didn't he didn't like uh, the offers he had. He went JUCO, and he ended up going. He's going to Jacksonville now. He's there now. Cool. And then another one of my teammates, he was like top. I don't know what number he was in the country, but he ended up going to Miami. Cool. So he's there now. And then. I'm not gonna lie, I act, for the rest of them, I don't know. But our team was pretty young. We had like a we had a couple a couple people who like are still in high school or are going to college now, and I don't know mm-hmm. where they decided to go. But we were pretty good, and we got like we got a good amount of offers. It was really the um, my man Jakai, the one who's at Miami. Mm-hmm. Like he would just bring high major coaches in mm-hmm. to like every game, so like they're gonna yeah. see us too. Mm-hmm. And then from there, you play well, you'll get uh, you'll get hit up. So in December, we went to a a big tournament in South Carolina called Bojango Bash. And I had a, I had a really good second half against some top team from Canada. And then school started to hit me up like Presbyterian. That's when William and Mary first hit me up at that tournament. Uh, Coastal Carolina. That's a cool one. Yeah. yeah. Delaware. There were a lot of schools that like I was liking, but William and Mary was just like, it felt like home. Like mm-hmm. when they recruited me, Usually schools will send me like their assistant and then their head coach, but William and Mary sent me like all, all three assistants. The head coach flew out to my game, so it was like, or he might actually he drove there because it was Maryland to Virginia, yeah. but okay. he pulled up to the game. So I was just like, I really felt loved and like felt like they really wanted me. Mm-hmm. And for a kid who like just wants to go D one, that's mm-hmm. all I was really working for. It didn't really matter like the level; it just mattered like who wanted me the most. Right. And they definitely made me feel the most wanted at the time. Do you enjoy their uh, their campus and facilities? Well, when you were there, did you, was that like another thing that was calling you? Like their facilities, like the, what the campus had to offer and whatnot? Yeah, definitely. Because I didn't get to go on an official visit. Yeah. So I went on an unofficial, I went to a game against Elon and like, it was packed, bro. It was a crazy atmosphere. And at that time they were like, they were really good. They, yeah. I think they were second in the conference. Um, they actually had, Somebody named Nate Knight. He plays in the league now. Wow. Uh, they had, like, a like a seven-foot big man. He plays yeah. overseas now, so Jesus they were Christ. stacked. <laughs> and, like, I went, and the atmosphere was crazy. Yeah. Like, the the arena is huge, and it was filled, like, every seat. It was also senior night, too. Though. Yeah. Mm. But, um, <laughs> yeah. It was, it's tough, though. It was they dumb, get you. Yeah. That is how they get you. So the arena was tough. Yeah. And I was like, yo, this arena is insane. Like, the atmosphere is crazy. Yeah. Like, I want to play in this. And the campus was cool. It was like it's like the opposite of uh, Wilkesbury, though. It's like I don't want to say in the middle of nowhere, but in a super small yeah. town. Where's this and college it, located? Williamsburg, Virginia. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's like it was in a super small town. It was like super like like bro. If I walk off campus, like I see people like 
reenacting like mm. medieval scenes. <laughs> they were like LARPing. LARPing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With the shields and shit. Yeah, That's like crazy bro. shit. You didn't hop in? You were to try and get in there? Nah. Nah? nah. Yeah. I probably would have joined them. I probably would have too. Think, I think it was like, no, nah, I think it was people's jobs though. Yeah. Because it's like a, it's like neighborhood with like, Probably like five blocks of just like colonial stuff. No, they just take that shit very seriously. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was tough, bro. It would be crazy, bro. I would just be walking through and like just see like musketeers marching. Yeah. That's like, hilarious. Like, what like, the that's fuck? tough. That is pretty tough. I know. Yeah, <laughs> like, it is tough, but after a while, you're like, yo, I really nah, go to school here. No, that's that weird shit, low key. Right? Yeah, it is weird. Bro. You're like, damn, I really go to school here, bro. Until nah, bro. actual <laughs> battle break loose, you don't know what the you need them to do right. about yeah. the swords and shit and the muskets. Now, what were you going to say, though? Nah, so, so transitioning from high school to college, that got to be different. Yeah. The speed, the skill, the the game IQ, all that has to be different, right? So did your relationship change with the game of basketball, or did it grow? Did, it, did your love for it grow? Yeah, I think it definitely grew. It just, like, when you go to college, it's a lot more X and O's. Yeah. It's, like, the game is so much more mental, so it's, yeah. like, there's so much stuff to take in, and it's just like, wow, I was really playing for this long, and I thought I was really good, but yeah. I didn't know all this, like, simple yeah. stuff. And some of the stuff that you get taught is, like, simple. It's, like, uh, common sense, but you just don't. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You don't realize it. So it's, like, it really opens your eyes, but it can also, like, I know college has ruined the love for a lot of players. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. So it can be tough, and it's really just about your experience. I mean, mine wasn't, mine hasn't been the best so far, but, like, I'm just thankful to be here and – like, I didn't really like going to William & Mary, but I love my teammates. Yeah. Like, that was probably my favorite team I've ever been on. So, like, I didn't like the school itself, but being there, yeah. being on the team with them, it made it cool. So how is, like, your current school? You fuck with the atmosphere of that place? You fuck with the facilities there? And how's, like, your team, like, your teammates and stuff there at your new college? Uh, yeah, I love my new school. Actually, like, when people ask me, like, what do you like more about your new school? I just, like, honestly tell them it's easier to tell you what I don't like more. Because, like... Hmm. Every, almost everything is better. And I don't mean to like oh, bash women yeah. because I did. I enjoy my time at Women Mary, but like mm. UMass Lowell is a lot better for me personally. How long have you been there now? Um, Probably a few months, like three three months. Did you attend? Oh, summer. Okay, so you didn't like actually go to school there yet at all? No, but I met the team and just chilled with the team. So how was that like them like breaking down like a new area of that for you? Like are they putting you on to like the people to mess with, like the girls, like the locations, like yeah. where to go out to eat, like just the fun shit to do? Yeah, they put me on to everything, bro, and they're all from Maryland. Yeah. So like that's cool too. They're mad funny. They mm. be bidding crazy. <laughs> I've never heard that bit. That must be a DMV thing, like they say bid. Bidding? Yeah. Never heard that. They nah. be saying that in Philly. No, nah, I never heard that. No, nah, yeah, I never did but, that. But um all right, so to go back to William and Mary, so like you were getting some serious tick though, right? Like that was yeah. kind of that was kind of surprising some people as well. Like you were out there playing, yeah, and like having highlights and stuff like that. So, did you have to compete to get a spot, or were like were were you automatically guaranteed to to get a spot, or how did that work? Um, I had to compete for the spot, but like it was basically just if I came in mm-hmm. and did what I was supposed to do, mm-hmm. like I wasn't a head case or anything, like yeah, I should have been good. So I came in, competed, did what I was supposed to do, and then I got the spot. And it actually surprised mm-hmm. me when I was like playing well, because mm-hmm. like. I don't know. My head, I guess I thought everybody was LeBron. I was just like, yo, I'm about to play D1 basketball. Like, people are about to be insane. Yeah. And in my first game, we played ODU. And I, I went, like, 3 for 11. Yeah. So I had a bad game, mm-hmm. but I had 13 points. And, mm-hmm. like, I was just blowing by defenders, and it was super easy. And I was yeah. like, yo, like, they're not as good as I thought. So that, pr- so. that must probably have given you, given you a, like, a crazy confidence boost. Yeah. Like, I can really compete with these guys. Yeah. Right? So, like, you get there, and it's like, like, damn, I'm really here. Like, this is, like, what I dreamed to be doing for yeah. so long. And, like, damn, I'm really here. And it's time for me to play. Mm. Yeah. And I think you had, like, a um, a high in that season of what? Like, 39 points? 29 nah, points? Nah, not that season. This That was my sophomore. Yeah. My freshman year, uh, I think my highest was, like, 16. Okay. But it was a, it was a tough 16, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's cool, though, man. And uh, and isn't isn't um, William & Mary, like, predominantly, like, a – a liberal school, like a lip, like a, yeah. like there's a lot of like, I don't even know how to say it without sounding crazy. <laughs> but Lydia told me some stat where like the majority of women there are like, I don't even know, something crazy. Yeah, bro, it's not a fun school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very strict. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Can't like, crack a lot of jokes. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I actually got in trouble for that. Oh, I got, yeah, man. I got in crazy, well, I didn't get in crazy trouble, but like me and a couple of my teammates almost got in trouble for like, like playing with our pronouns. 
Oh, see, that's what I mean. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like heavy on like the LGBTQ community. Yeah, and I didn't know that at first. Yeah. So I was like, I was just joking. You know, I always make jokes and yeah. stuff. And I like, and we were in a group, me, and I made my thing like, uh, she, her. Okay. And oh. they drawled on me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yo, like, my bad. Yeah, oh, so, so uh, were you a avid party goer at William & Mary? Freshman year, I never went out. Literally. Were there parties? Like, is it a party school? Um, or is it, it like doesn't a, sound is it like a LARPer kind of <laughs> medieval jousting? It's school? weird, bro. So like, <laughs> people will try to go out, but it's like the same people. Uh-huh. So it's like, nah, it's never really active. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. Nah. Nah? nah not it's at just all. basketball, I mean, basketball, basketball for you. Basketball, basketball, basketball. I did go out a lot more in my sophomore year, but it wasn't like, it was just, <clears> I'm going out because I want to go out with the team. Or like, you yeah. want to go out because. You want to see you want to see some girls like yeah. you just don't want to stay in the crib, but like it's not a, you go out and you're like damn I just want to stay at home. <laughs> so stay home. Yeah. yeah. Nah, but uh, so so what made you decide like you're doing well, mm-hmm. right? You're you're getting some good points. You know I see you on Fox News and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So what made you decide I gotta leave this place? I gotta enter the the portal. And what was the portal like? Like what was that process like? Mm. That process was crazy. Yeah. So I actually I ended up uh, not wanting to go to William and Mary anymore because. My sophomore season, we were not very good at all. We were five and twenty-seven. We were like one of the worst yeah. teams in the country. Mm-hmm. So, basketball is, is not fun when you're losing, yeah. and I hate losing. And we lost twenty-seven games in a college basketball season. So, like that year was terrible for me. And then on top of that, like as the season went on, my minutes went down, just because me and the coach like personally weren't seeing eye to eye. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was just like, I don't think this is the place for me. So I just went, hopped in the portal. And actually, like, six, seven of us hopped in the portal. Like, it wasn't wow. just me. Like, From William & Mary? Yeah. Like, Damn. Yeah, it wasn't just, like, me who, ha- like, everyone hated it, bro. Damn. It was, a, it was like, for the team, team-wise, it was a great college experience. Like, everything else-wise, like, it just wasn't what we really wanted. Yeah. So, like, everybody left. And then the portal, that was cool, too, because, like, the portal's crazy, bro. You don't really know, like, especially for me, like, I played really well my freshman year, but sophomore mm-hmm. year, my numbers went down because my minutes went down. Yeah. So, like, hopping in a portal, you, you don't know if you're going to get something. <laughs> so, like, just having, like, six other guys who are in the portal with you is, like, it's kind of cool. It's yeah. Reass- more reassuring. Like, right. So, I mean, I got more people to go through this process with. Yeah. Right. And they were all teammates, obviously. Yeah. Like people you played teammates, with. Yeah. So, what do you attribute or attribute that downfall of that team to? Like, was it a, self- a self-destructive environment? Was it, it was like, like the players thing. and the it's coaches like not getting thing, along? Right? Yeah, I think it was just a culture thing. Like, we just – we had we had really good basketball players, bro. We just couldn't put it together yeah. as a team. Not even as a – yes, we couldn't put it together as a team, but, like, as a team and a coaching staff, yeah. it was just never, like – You guys weren't seeing eye to eye? Yeah, it was just, like – And it's also it hard working. to, like, when shit's not going your way. A lot of, like, egos and emotions are flustering, and, mm-hmm. I mean, I could see that. But go ahead. What were you going to say before? Um, no, I was just going to say, like – we were just struggling yeah. and, like, felt like we were kind of just doing the same thing over and over yeah. and failing instead of, like, mm. trying to do something different yeah. and failing, like. Mm-hmm. Innovating. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know the definition of insanity? Like, our coach, I would yeah. used to say it all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. Like, yeah. That's what we were doing. Yeah. Wow. So. And so, while you were while you were playing freshman, sophomore year, were any, were, did you play against any guys where – you know, these guys are probably league bound. Mm-hmm. They were like really good. And you got to like get a glimpse of like what that would look like. Did you get to play against any of those guys? And if so, who and how'd that go? Uh, definitely. In high, well, in high school, I played against, I was playing against uh, like kids who were committed to DD1 like every game. And then we played like mm-hmm. Hillcrest Prep, who has a couple. Actually, I don't know if they have a couple people in the league. I think they have one person in the league and like someone else is going. And at Mont Bird, who like their whole starting lineup is in the league right now. Damn, that's so, insane. Yeah, they were like they're literally like the best high school team of all time. It was crazy for real. Yeah, it was like when they had Kay Cunningham, Scotty Barnes, mm. Derek Whitehead. Oh my they god, they were crazy. Like we played them and they put their bench in and it was all five stars. So, like we got we got beat by that's like fucking insane. Damn. Yeah, it was crazy. How does that even? That's a high school team you're talking about? Yeah, in Mont Verde. How the Florida. fuck does that happen? Do they recruit? <laughs> is it like a private yeah, they, school? They, they, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, Mont Verde is like. The best basketball, like Montverde, IMG, mm. schools like, like that. Where are they from? Where's Montverde from? Are they Mont from? Florida. I've, I've oh, heard okay. of it. Mm-hmm. Montverde and IMG are from Florida. Yeah, I know about IMG. But uh, there's a ton of those, like, super teams now. Like, who does Bronny James play for? Uh, he plays for Sierra Canyon, I'm pretty sure. 
I think he plays for Sierra Canyon. And there's like a ton of teams like that where they just have like a yeah. ton of kids that, you know, their dad's in the NBA or their whatever that might yeah, be. Yeah, they but just have mad notoriety. Yeah, right. But that's crazy. So you have played in high school and college against guys who are like league bound and, and like that type of talent. Yeah, it's crazy. We played Virginia, and Virginia is like the top of the top. Like They're, they're a big time school, right? Uh, they're ACC. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're like – they're like top of the top. Virginia is just everybody knows like Duke, Virginia, North yeah. Carolina, yeah. like schools mm-hmm. like that. And I was hyped for that game, so we played them. We got spanked bad, like thirty something. But mm-hmm. I had twelve against them, and it was like I played really well. And then after the game, I was like um, talking to one of my teammates, and some dude like he definitely cooked us. But they were like, "Yo, he's so tough. He's going to the league." Da 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 da. And then he ended up going to the league. He's in the league now, and he's playing well in the league too. But it was like playing against players like that and me actually playing well. I was mm-hmm. like, yo, like, it just kept happening. I, yeah. was just, I just kept playing good against really good players. And I was like, yo, like, I'm a lot better than I think. Do you think you get scary when you play those guys or do you get more excited to play? No, nah, I get way more excited. Yeah? Like, yeah. It's honestly, I feel like it's kind of bad. But, like, the worse somebody is, the harder it is for me to take them serious. Yeah. And it also mm-hmm. makes you play shittier, too. Like, when you're playing against yeah, a team it's that. Yeah, you to play down. Yeah. Play down to your. Uh, the level you're playing against. Mm. That's interesting. So when you got when you have guys that are better than you or around the same uh like skill level as you, you're better. Like you perform at a higher like a higher rate. Yeah, because it's kinda like I know this dude thinks he's better than me, but I don't think he's better than me. So like I really yeah. show him. That's a cool mindset to have, man, like to think you really are like that and to know it. I mean I think that's like if you believe in yourself in that way, then what isn't possible? Yeah, you really just got to gas yourself up. Because, like, yeah. I definitely think, like, yo, this dude can't guard me. But then, like, I do it. And I'm like, yo, this dude really yeah. can't guard me. Yeah, yeah like, like justifying it like, yeah. in your own head. Like, that's, like, the importance of an ego. Yeah. You know what I mean? To kind of, like, yeah, like, nobody can really fuck with me. I'm the best here. And then working to justify all the things that your ego yeah. had stated. It's yeah. the competitive game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's really cool. But, uh, so, you entered the portal. Mm-hmm. And and how does that work? Like, do you just say, come and get me? Like, how, I don't even know how a portal works. Like, so how portal does that? like, you could basically say, come and get me and wait to see who reaches out to you. Or once you're in the portal, so nobody can talk to you at all before you're, like, before you've entered it. Right. But once you're in it, it's all free game. So, like, hmm. as soon as you enter the portal, every school has, like, coaches just watching it. Mm. For anybody. Like, yeah, like, monitor it. Yeah. You, yeah. So, you enter the portal, you just get hit up by a bunch of different schools talking to a bunch of different schools and kind of just feel it out. And the process is crazy because, like, the transfer portal isn't like high school. You're not getting recruited from, like, junior year. You, like, have a few months to make a decision on a new mm. on a new school. Right. Yeah. So it's just really sped up and can be crazy. And it kind of was crazy. I was just getting texts from so many different schools. Like, I was getting texts from D3s, D2s, D1s, like, uh, JUCOs, mm-hmm. everywhere. I actually ended up committed to a JUCO before I went to UMass Lowell. And you went and played there? Or you just pulled you tracked it? I pulled it, yeah. So I had um I I was talking to D one schools, like I was talking to like Drexel. Oh yeah, also you could reach out to schools. I did that with a couple schools. That's cool. And then ended, that ended up working out for me too. So I was talking to like Drexel, Wagner, Binghamton, mm-hmm. schools like that. And then I was talking to this JUCO who, like, really wanted me. Like, they were fiending. So mm-hmm. I was like, yo, like, that's what's most important to me. So I was like, yo, like, I might just go JUCO. So I ended up committing there after I visited. And um, I committed there because they were really good. They are like, top ten in the country or something. And they have, like, high major coaches in their gym all the time, all the practices, open runs, stuff like that. So um, I committed there. But then UMass Lowell ended up hitting up my AAU coach. And um, just from there. Why did you decide UMass over? Because they're already Division One or, or what? Um, no, nah, it wasn't even that. Because I wanted to go, like, I was really, like, in my head, like, yo, I want to go high major, like, Big Ten, ACC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, UMass Lowell, <clears throat> they just hit me up. I talked to the coach. I loved what we had to say. Um, coach Lou, that's my guy. Shout out to him. Um, he started recruiting me, and I just, I felt like what they what they were preaching is what I was, like, looking for the most. Mm. And, and what's, what's – go ahead. I was going to say, and on top of that, he uh, – you know how I said I moved in with my coach my senior year? Mm-hmm. So the coach from UMass Lowell ended up knowing my coach. Mm, so they okay. were really cool. So that was kind of like a 
like a, right. a connection. Yeah. That if I went there, you know what I mean? It just made me more comfortable. Yeah. So on top of me already loving them off rip, off talking to them, like I found that out and was like, I visited, loved it, and was like, yo, like this is where I want to go. That's tough. And so you dig the culture. Like you like yeah. what they're about, how their school is ran and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I right. love it there. Bro. That's cool. Yeah. So do you think like – you had to analyze something in a different way, being that you thought you loved William and Mary, and then it turned out to be something different. Like, did you have to wear a different lens going into your second, you know, uh, yeah. hurrah with this new thing? Mm-hmm. I think definitely because, like, William and Mary, I was in like I was just thinking like an eighteen year old. I was like, yeah, right, like, I'm going D one. Yeah, this, yeah. This the school who wants me. Like, yeah. I wasn't taking anything else into consideration. Mm-hmm. Like it was just straight basketball. Yeah. Like so, this time around, I was like, "Yo, I'm gonna consider everything, like everything I'm looking for," because I just chose basketball. Right. And then basketball wasn't like what I wanted it to be, mm-hmm. and then everything else yep. also wasn't what I wanted it to be because I only decided on basketball. So I right. was like, "Yo, I gotta really." Yeah. Like be wise with this decision. Yeah. And, yeah, and take what you have accumulated from your first experience and translate that. But that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Hopefully, this is the spot. So, how do you anticipate performing here? Like, what's their schedule like? Who are they playing? Yeah, and when's your first game too? Our first game is probably like November seventh, November eighth, probably early November. Okay, uh, who you playing? You know? No, I don't know what the schedule is yet. Uh, Okay, I know we. I think we have like one more game to finalize, something like that. Okay, but when we get the schedule, I'll definitely let you guys know. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. uh, we play at Binghamton. I don't know when, but they're in our conference, so we okay. always play there once a year. Yeah. That'll probably be, like, January, February. Cool. That's Sometime New York, right? Play. Binghamton, New York? Yeah. Yeah, so that's not too far yeah. from here. Yeah, it's like cool. an hour, hour and ten from here. Yeah. So, yeah, what do you anticipate this season to be like? Like, do you – how do you feel, you know, um, you, all that shit? I feel good, bro. Like, like I said earlier, I was there all summer, so, like, the transition has been a lot easier. I already know all my teammates. Like, mm-hmm. I'm getting used to the play style. You know, mm-hmm. I'm getting comfortable with everybody. And we haven't even, like, started, like, full practices yet. Yeah. So, I think we have a lot of talent, bro. Like, this is a fun team to play on. We have a lot of athleticism. That's cool. Good players. Like, yeah. Chemistry. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited, bro. I think if I think if we just take care of what we're supposed to take care of, then we could be really good. That's what's up. And do you anticipate starting? Um, I mean, I don't know, honestly. We have a lot of, like, we have a lot of good guards, but uh, I don't know. So what's your training regimen like? Like, how do you stay fit in, like, the off season? Like, are you Ooh. eating right? Like, what's that like? Like, what's the, uh, what's, like, the staying fit life of a basketball player? Um, It's just really making sure you don't get out of shape. Because you yeah. get out of shape, you go back to school, you're done. Yeah. Like, you, like, yeah, you're done, bro. You're going to be dying in the workouts, all that. You might throw up. So is it really just, like, the reps of playing basketball, like, a lot of, like, games at the park? Or, like, are you getting a lot of – are you doing any lifting or anything like that? Yeah, definitely. You got to make sure you lift, too, because – yeah, people throw you around yeah. <laughs> at that level. They get big at, at that level, right? Yeah. yeah. Six foot, Start throwing six. you around. Yeah. You're like, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, bro. <laughs> yeah. But, like, as far as basketball, it's just a lot of reps yeah. consistently. Well, it seems consistently like that. In the gym. You could, like, like, as a basketball player, you could genuinely, like, play games almost every single day. Like, not yeah. like an actual, like, college-level game every day, but you mm-hmm. can go to the park and play, like, a pickup game every day. Yeah. For football, it wasn't really like that. Like, if you were going to play, like, a pickup game of football, that shit was, like, an event. Like, it was going to be, like, mm-hmm. next week we were going to do it at this time. But, like, you can pretty much just go to the park whenever you want and just get those, like, actual game reps in. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. You can't play multiple games of football. Oh, right no. <laughs> it's like a car crash every single oh. day. So. We would both be, like, 90 by now. Yeah, right. But even we were just talking to Josh Mason about that, too. He was saying that he has a lot of, like, he has a very hard time keeping a lot of basketball players in the gym and, like, doing all, like, the workouts yeah. that like, he's promoting and stuff. Like so I wonder, Yeah, I wonder what that is. Oh, with basketball players? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, nah, if they don't, like, for the most part, if we don't have to lift, we're not going to. But, like, mm. we have to lift, so yeah. we do. <laughs> you like lifting? Is that something nah, you enjoy? No. Nah. Really? Nah, <laughs> I hate, like, I hate lifting. Really? With a passion. That's Why? odd. I like it. I think lifting nah, is fun. I like a good bro, little like, meditation like, session. I can't, I can't get it up. Like, yeah. I don't want to do it no more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's, like, different types of workouts for different yeah. types of athletes. Like. I really like push-ups, though. Like, I like yeah. push-ups. I like body squats. That's like great. Or something like that. Like, yeah. Those are functional. Pull-ups. Those yeah. are functional exercises. Like, some exercises are genuinely useless for a yeah. basketball player. Like, you don't need to be benching 225 yeah, no. pounds. For Absolutely what? Not. For what? Unless you're, like, a big. Unless you're, like, a big man you need to be yeah. like battling down there with somebody. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's abs- that's necessary at all. I I remember that one time I sent you that book that it's it's called uh, Relentless by um, 
I don't remember the guy's name right now, but he was a coach. He was an individual coach for like Dwayne Wade. He was a coach mm. for Kobe. Oh yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I can't think of the name, but it's a really good book. And he he's basically a strength and conditioning coach for basketball players. Mm. And the type of trainings that they do is like it's wonky. Like they have to like put one foot on a on a box and like jump and land on the other foot with weight in their hand, but doing like rotational movements. And it's very functional and like yeah. applied like right to the sport yeah you know what i mean and i think that's what you see a lot of like nba guys doing like they do yeah. a lot of like that type of exercise which i think is cool um but yo um who do you think like who's your who the guy who are the guys you look up to in the nba right now like who are the guys that you try to base your style off of and stuff like that honestly really like because you kind of it's like a russell you kind of put like a russell westbrook yeah i think i think as the years have gone on like I just try to take a little bit from everyone's game. Mm-hmm. So I used to like, and like, remember like seventh grade, I was like, yo, I'm mini Westbrook. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Like, I used to feed to be Westbrook, but like, I just started taking a little bit from everybody's game. Like, I love Dame now. Damian mm-hmm. Lillard. Yeah, yeah. So I really like him. I love Kyrie, obviously. Yeah. You don't like watching Kyrie. But like, I just try to take a little bit from everybody's game. And I don't really have a favorite player anymore. I feel like it's because I'm getting older and I'm mm-hmm. like closer to their age. And I'm like, yo, like, yeah, I really like the way he plays, but like he's not my favorite player. Right, because you're about to be damn near in their shoes. Yeah, yeah, which is crazy, man. Like that's that's right around the corner. And so I'm I'm assuming you you're planning on going to the NBA. Yeah, that's the yeah. plan. That's crazy. Yeah. What, when did dream, you realize man. that that's like what you wanted to do with your life? Like when did you pick up that dream? And is that like your dream? Like do you have anything else that you yeah. fuck with outside of basketball? Um, I'm yeah. I would love to be like. Do, like, kind of, like, what Dame does, but, like, for basketball. Oh, okay. So, like, I would love to do that. Like, if I could, like, train kids or coach yeah. kids for basketball, I would love to do that. But, like, um, yeah, it's just basketball for the most part. Yeah? Yeah. Like, so, I like, just, I just really want to play ball. When did you realize that the NBA, like, was the path that you were going to take? Like, when did you realize, like, from start, this is, like, what I want to do for the rest of my life? There was, like, there was never a time where, like, I didn't want to go to the NBA. Yeah. So, like, literally since I've had mm. memory, I've just always played basketball. That's I dope. Go to the NBA. Mm. That's crazy, man. So, do you have, like, a plan in your head? Like, all right, I'm going to play these next two seasons, and I'm going to, like, what, get an agent and then enter the draft? Like, how does that work? Um, I mean, the process, I really don't know too much about the process because I still haven't, like, yeah. gone through it or know too many people that have gone through right. it. But, like, I mean, I don't know. I just really just want to play basketball after college. So, like. Right. Wherever I can do that. If that's the NBA, like if I'm if I'm getting off and it's the league, then I'm gonna go to the league. If it's overseas and I'm gonna go overseas, like as mm-hmm. long as I'm getting paid to play basketball, I'm gonna be happy. Yeah, well we had one guy from uh from Myers go to uh, go overseas and play basketball. What was his name? Moore or something? Rashid. <coughs> Rashid Moore. Is yeah. he still playing? Uh I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's gotta still be playing. I seen him a couple months ago. That actually sounds so familiar. I don't know why I can't put a face to that. Where's he at now? Do you know? Um I have no idea. I want to say he plays in Germany, but I may also just have no idea, and he may mm. not be in that country. So, mm. <laughs> travel is huge for me. basketball. Travel is like really big for basketball nowadays. Why is that? Is it just do they play it everywhere? Yeah, they play it everywhere. Yeah, they you play, play it everywhere. Olympic basketball. Oh yeah, yeah. no, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. No Olympic football, you know. Yeah, Olympic no, they basketball. really only play that here, and then what? A little bit in Germany and what? Canada too. Football? They play fo- yeah football yeah. in Canada. Yeah, there's but football like, all over, but it has like different rules though. Yeah, and that's they interesting. Just are Dog water in other state, other countries. Right? You say they play football in Germany? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Not I like know that. they do that because did you ever meet Berlin? Alex. I'm guessing not. So yeah, he was a transfer uh, foreign exchange student. He actually came to Myers my sophomore year, your junior year. Nah, it's my senior year. So your senior year, mm-hmm. my junior year, and mm-hmm. uh, he was a kid from Germany who just loved football, so he wanted to come over here to play football. That's tough. Yeah, I yeah. went to one of his games too in Germany. Really? Yeah, that was what? cool. Really? Yeah. When went the fuck Germany? was that? Yeah, I went to Germany. I went to the Netherlands, and I went to Greece. That's tough. Where With him. That? When? Yeah. Uh, last year. Okay. Yeah, that was dope. I bro. heard Greece is beautiful. Bro. Greece is crazy, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Greece is one of the wildest experiences of my whole life. <laughs> yeah. I definitely gotta go out there. Yeah, bro. Travel's big, man. I want to. I want to see the whole world. I want to see the whole world. But that's cool because you probably will. Like, have you ever? Like, what's the most you travel for basketball? Like, where have you been just playing? Um, I remember I played AAU. I played for the Lightning, and we were going everywhere, bro. Syracuse, Maryland, yeah. you know, to New York. I mean, that's just on the like the eastern side of the. Mm-hmm. Best, but still, you know, um, I don't think I left the East Coast yet. I've been to like Florida. Florida is the furthest I've been. Mm. Maybe like South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to go over there, man. I want to see what the Carolinas are like. Do you like it over there? Like, do you see yourself ever living down there? Or what do you think? 
Probably not. I think, huh? I'm a, yeah, I'm a East. Uh, I'm like a Northeast guy. Really? Yeah. So, like, if you ever settle down, where do you think you settle down? Wilkesbury? Uh, Which is cool. So. That's uh, cool if you decide, but uh, I'm just curious. <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like. I feel like the area that I'm in now in Mass is like really nice. Yeah. It's just so cold. Massachusetts? Yeah, it's it's nice there, bro. For real? Yeah, it's just so cold and it's so cold year round. But I haven't mm. experienced the cold yet, so I feel like after I have to deal with the cold yeah. for ten months, my mind will change. That's interesting. Yeah, I never that is very interesting. ever considered Massachusetts. That just seems like some. some I never even heard shit somebody like say that. <laughs> 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 what is there to do in Massachusetts? Like, have you are you familiar with the area? Like, at least um, for where your school is? Not really, but like. I'm not familiar with the area, yeah. and I already have like I have a good amount mm. of things that I can go do. Yeah. Mm. So, cause That's I'm cool. like I'm like 35 minutes out from Boston. Oh really? So, yeah. So you go go to the city, Boston. See a couple yeah. comedy shows. <laughs> 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 That's fucking sick though. Wicked man. smart in Boston. <laughs> That's the funniest funny. thing ever when you go there and you like hear people with an actual accent. I heard Boston's really racist though. I did hear that too. I haven't experienced it yet, but I definitely heard it because LeBron was talking that's about what I, it. That's where I saw yeah. it too. Yeah. I did a little bit of research and I looked yeah. it up. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. That's crazy. But no, I want to go to Boston too. I've heard Boston's dope. But uh, no, nah, that's cool, man. So, yo, do you have anything else like you're interested in besides basketball? Like, is your mind, like, is the pie chart in your head strictly basketball? Just like, what else do you in. like? Do you like anything else? Um, Or what else are you into? Like, as in. What do I want to do, or like, just like hobby. what else do I? Oh, yeah, yeah, what else yeah, you fuck with? Yeah. Um, honestly, bro, it's really just basketball. I mean, I watch TV. I listen to a lot of music. <laughs> I listen to a lot of music, though. You ever like, think you would make music? Nah, nah. You're in five K. I'd listen to it. Yeah. Absolutely not. Ever Why even not? had the thought? I think we've all had that. Yeah, thought you know, I think I, I definitely he like, freestyles <laughs> at parties. Right? I know for a <laughs> fact. I could see it. <laughs> I'll be freestyling, I'll be freestyling, but oh, like man. to make an actual song, bro. I think I might. I may make an actual song because, uh, like, me, Gabe, oh he's talking God. about it, but we're not going to drop it. Like, I'm not, not going to nah, drop please, a song, bro. Please, bro. Please, I'm like, like I'll, I'll make a song and, like, listen to it with gang. Like, yo, this song we made. Like, <laughs> nah, that's far, funny. As far as dropping it, I can imagine it, nah. Gabe, bro. Oh, <laughs> Gabe, man. Shout out Gabe. I'm trying to see Gabe on the podcast. Sure. Oh, I love man. Gabe, bro. Isn't that what we said originally when yeah. we were going to ham up that we were going to get Gabe in here, too? Yeah, Fucking we were going to do you and Gabe, which I think would be cool. But I think Gabe has his own story, though, because he what's he doing? He's at Juco right now. He's uh, uh, at Lack, right? He committed to Lock Haven. Like, oh, like right. Not too long that's ago. Right. Not too long that's ago. That's right. He literally just elite. left today. Mm -hmm. That's Division Two. Yeah. That's good, man. That's good. And does he, you think he wants to play in the NBA? I haven't uh, talked to Gabe in a minute, man. Yeah. I think Gabe, I think Gabe definitely would like to play in the NBA, but like, I feel like if he doesn't, like, he, yeah. he wouldn't be pressed. Yeah. Like, yeah. He'd be chilling. He's a savage, bro. Gabe, I swear, savage. even when we were younger, Gabe never fucked with sports. I didn't even really see him get. Did yeah. he play basketball like, nah, when we were younger was, and he played football? I, I always talk to him about this. Like, I'd be like, "What what were you doing?" Because like, after after we graduated, he started working out every day, and I'm like, "Bro, you mm. should have been like working yeah. out every day." Yeah, but Gabe was uncoordinated for a while. Remember? Yeah, he couldn't like connect his whole body because he was so damn long. Big. Yeah, yeah. That's why he got in the gym because he's like, "I'm tired of this." Right, right. But I remember he was playing football and he was a football player, and then we were doing mm -hmm. bull in the ring, and somebody lit his shit up. So was then, he good though? He be saying he was nah, all right. At I'm football, not gonna lie, bro. <laughs> Gabe was just fucking six nineteen. Gabe was tough. I remember, sir, I remember watching Gabe though, like going on fly routes and just snagging shit though. I remember that, and I was like, "Damn, Gabe!" Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. Gabe I mean, had the body. Like Gabe always had the body to be very fucking special. That's my guy. Yeah. So like, I seen some clips. He be saying he was all right. I don't really know, bro. I never went to one of his games. Yeah, yeah. But uh, nah, that's that's funny though, man. That's what's up. So, damn, NBA dreams. Yeah, that's tough, bro. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. Um, Any particular like teams you fuck with? Like, wh who's what's your favorite team? I don't even really have a favorite team. I really, that's interesting. Do you yeah. watch a lot of basketball? Yeah, I watch a lot of college basketball. Mm. Like, that's what I really watch. I watch a lot of NBA, but like, as far as a favorite team, it's been the Trailblazers for a while. But yeah. like, they suck, and I'm not from <laughs> Portland. I just like Dave Lillard. So yeah. Like, <laughs> That seems like that's something pretty unique to basketball is people follow around, follow around players more rather than teams. Like, a lot yeah. of people that I talk to about basketball, because I don't really watch a lot of basketball, but a lot of people I do talk to, like, they follow specific players around yeah. rather right, like than, a like, LeBron an individual team. Or something like that. Yeah, which yeah. is very – that's always been pretty interesting to me. Why do you think that is? Uh, I feel like because basketball is a lot more like – I don't know. I guess with style – and, like, everything we can do, like, yeah. just 
it's like, oh, snap, Kyrie can go, but 20 yeah. legs behind the back, like, jelly on somebody, like, wow, I want to be like him. So then it seems mm, like he goes, you go. It seems like basketball is also a little bit more, like, individual, rather, even though it is a team sport, like, it's yeah. almost people want more eyes on them than, like, the whole unit. Not that that's even necessarily a bad thing, but that's just what it seems like. When you hear people getting talked about, it's more or less an individual player rather than a full team in the NBA, too. Seems yeah, like. I guess I never really noticed that, too, like, opposed to football. Yeah. Which is pretty odd, yeah, like, when most of the time, I mean, individual football players get talked about, too, but most of the time, because, like, football is, like, a heavily team-based sport. Like, yeah. whenever you hear somebody talk about football, one of the first things they always reference is how much of a team sport it is. So, maybe that's mm-hmm. the difference. I don't really know. What's that like, though? Like, it, like what's the team, like, chemistry like on a basketball team? Um, Smaller. Yeah, it must be, smaller. right? Yeah. yeah, it can be wacky. Uh, I've been on teams where, like, the team chemistry was awful. Yeah. And then I've been on teams where the team chemistry was amazing. So it really just depends on the group of guys you have and, like, how how much they love it. Yeah. Because, like, you got, you got guys on your team that don't really love it for real. They're, like, mm. their demeanor. Yeah. Like, just their whole their whole vibe mm. throwing you off all season, too. So it's kind of, yeah, it just definitely mm. depends on the people you got. Yeah. I also never jumped around at all. Like, how was that, like, for you with football? Like, bouncing around to, like, a different school or two. Like, what was it like getting readjusted to that kind of team environment? Well, I think basketball might be a little bit different because – you're constantly on new teams. Like, there's different travel teams. You yeah. play for different mm-hmm. clubs. There's different, you know, there's a whole <coughs> ton of stuff that you could do. And uh, well, football is different, though, because, you know, you're with the team for a longer period of time, I think. But yeah. it is different. Like, you could have different personalities, and they play different roles. And, yeah. you know, certain people don't mesh well, and that could buck up how the team chemistry works. So, you know, and some people are all – sometimes it's like a whole family, and, like, everybody gets along, and the team works and operates well. So – yeah, I don't really know, but um, yo. So why don't you think there's any like, why don't you think Wilkesbury has developed basketball? Like, why do you think basketball is kind of undeveloped in this area? There's no like real big guys. There's mm-hmm. no or like standout schools. Yeah. Like, there's not a lot of standout schools in our yeah. area either. There's no like NBA guys here. There's no like a lot of. There's not. There's like you're like the only Division One kid yeah. that came from this area. But you went Division One from a different area, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. So, yeah. so why do you think that? Ha- why do you think that is? Because we have it's potential. Like we have like a guy like Will. We got remember Herm. Mm-hmm. He was really good. I remember him being real well. We had um, what was that? What was that what was that one kid? Light skin kid. He played for Myers. Really good shot. Shaw. Shaw. Yeah, him. You know, we had um, uh, Omar. We had. Yeah. Juwan. We yeah. had a lot of good basketball Juwan's players. Juwan's brother. Bro. Remember Juwan's brother was really good. Lamont. Yes. Yeah. They were all really good. We had a lot of good basketball players, bro. It's just like we have no exposure out here. There's no real like no no way for basketball players in this area to go play in front of the big coaches so they yeah. can possibly get the offers. Cause like I mean, going D one is hard, but like it's easier if you're playing in front of D one coaches. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they just really have no exposure is what it is. Right. And that sucks, too, because it's like I got the exposure. I got to experience it, but, like, from four hours away from home, like, mm-hmm. I had to go deep. Yeah. Right. And so not everybody has mm. that type of access. Yeah, and I didn't even want to leave. So yeah. Like, it could also yeah. be a mindset thing, too, because those people, I mean, even necessarily you just said that you didn't want to leave, but a lot of people also had the opportunity that maybe they could have dipped to get more eyes on them, mm-hmm. seeing as that how it was successful for you. But I also know a couple of those people you mentioned also went on to, like, have kids and started families pretty young. So, mm. like, it also might have been harder, you know? Yeah. But maybe that's a part of the legacy, bro. Maybe yeah. you had to leave in order to get exposed to the right coaches. Yeah. You know? And uh, – but we still have, like, there's the My Sky elites out here who are mm-hmm. who are working to develop those guys. There's in individual, like, coaches that work with people. So, yeah, I don't know. It's just I, – I find it's weird that not many people are popping off from this area for basketball. But basketball is probably the hardest sport to go Division One. Right? It's like, I think the biggest thing is AAU. Like, if you get on a good AAU team, mm, you travel right. a lot, play in front of the coaches, like, you're, you'll be good. Right. Like, I didn't even get my offers from AAU, but, like, usually AAU is, like, the easiest way to get offers. That's interesting. But we just have no, like, we don't have any shoe shoe teams around here. <coughs> like, we have team final. Shoe teams? Yeah. So, like, there's, like, circuits, like where the best the best players play, there's like an Adidas, an Under Armour, and a Nike. Mm. And like, oh, okay, I see what you mean now. Yeah, mm. so like, there's none close to us. There's Team Final, which is like Philly, and right? There's Philly Pride, 
and there's like we are one which is also like philly delaware so like mm-hmm. we have no like big au teams in our area right what was we had firm i remember firm was like an aau squad yeah firm. we had lightning <clears throat> yeah we have firm lightning but those are like like once you like play real AU basketball, oh, those yeah. are like those are like we were getting spanked. I remember yeah. I played for the Lightning for like two years. We were getting spanked. Really? We'd go to Syracuse and get washed by forty. Are they still around? I said fuck basketball. I didn't want to play anymore. <laughs> 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 oh, nah, no, bro, if you, you would have kept playing, you would have really you really would have been tough though. I didn't grow. I'm five. I'm damn near six foot. Not even six foot. Yeah. yeah. So well, who, I got like I know a lot of players that are short though. And, like for real? Yeah. Like killing it. Like, that you're got, playing with? I got yeah. I got a uh, somebody on my team like five nine. Yende. He's tough. For real? He's a, he gets bucked. Yeah, he's Booming? tough. He, yeah. Yeah? Really? Windmill, all that. Yeah. Wow. That's normally how it goes, though, because yeah. if you have the heart as a 5'8 man to make it to Division One basketball, like, you yeah. got to be fucking good. got to you know be good. Yeah. And usually, like, the short guards are real tough. Like Yeah. Like, like Larry. Him. You know Larry Anderson? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. dumb fast. He's crazy. <laughs> he's That's how it be to them little compact crazy. bodies. Like, they're just fucking moving through he's lanes not all even crazy. He's 5'9", bro. Larry might be, like, 5'7". Oh, man. <laughs> Just jumping out yeah, the gym. Yeah. It's crazy. He's crazy out there. Yeah. It's that's crazy. risky, though, because, like, what is, like, the actual, like, height? Like, who's the shortest person to play in the NBA that's actually good? Um, Probably Isaiah Thomas. How He's tall is Isaiah nine. Thomas? Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Shortest person ever was Muggsy Bogues, right? Yeah. 5'2". Yeah. What the yeah. fuck? I think yeah. He might have been, like, 5'4". For real? Yeah. Let's Google check Let's it. look it up. Yeah. I, yo, How? you want to know what's crazy? What if he's 5'3"? Yo, I feel like he might be 5'3", though. Right in the middle. That's insane. But he man. was dunking, right? Muggsy Bogey. Yeah, he was. Like, in games or just staying. I don't like know. He could just do it, like, yeah, in practice uh, and stuff. He if was that, in a dunk contest. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, I, I mean, it. we all know I knew it, crazy. bro. I knew it. I was yeah. like, yo, he's not 5'4". And bro, so, here Muggsy Bogues is next to, um, is this guy Bol Bol? Bol Bol's his Bol-Bol. son. What's it? No, no, no. This guy. It's not his son? No, his son plays now. His son's, like, a high prospect. yeah, yeah. Manute Bowl. Manute Bowl. And so that's Muggsy Bogues, the shortest guy. Right and next to him. Jesus so Christ. Deep, right? You said Ball Bowl. I, I thought of the, the Mike Bowl Tyson's punch-out fighter. That's what uh, I thought of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. insane, though. There's like Crazy. three basketballs in his whole tour, so taller than that guy. Yeah. Yeah, man. But, yo, so would you be con- – you're considered short, like, in yeah. the NBA and stuff like that. You think you're going to grow anymore or what? You think it's clipped for you? Nah, I think it's clipped. I think I might have. A lot of people tell me they think I grown. So I like thought I you might grown. be fake six two now. For real? Oh yeah. Yeah, maybe because I was six one. I don't so, remember. So so with shoes on, <coughs> I'm six one. But uh, like feel me basketball, you always wear shoes. So I'm six two. Yo, look at this. That's crazy. I just checked my DMs and somebody texted me and said, "Hey, you looking shorter, my boy?" They just said that to you. <laughs> That's crazy. That is pretty odd. I'm, I swear, bro. Look. What the fuck? That's hey, that. you looking short, like out of nowhere, no context, yeah. nothing. That's crazy. I'm about to leave that shit on scene. That's that fucking. It. I know. Why you hating on me? Let me <laughs> simulation uh, shit. What the right? hell is going on today? Like damn, like you come at the height. Right. So like, I know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Come on, man. Want to right. fight? Like a ba- <laughs> yeah. a basketball play. player is very self conscious about play. their height. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Really? Mm-hmm. really? Yeah, definitely. Wow. I mean, shorter players, but like. For me, I like the size I am because I feel like if I was taller, I wouldn't be. As, yeah, I wouldn't yeah, really. As be, I mean, I'd probably just figure it out. My game mm-hmm. would just be different, but like I'm me, so I just like my game now. How would you describe your game? Um, I think tough. <laughs> just like no matter, <laughs> tough. no matter, no matter what I do, it's tough. Like I nah, know, but you're you're more of like a <coughs> slasher, not so much a shooter. Or are you a shooter? Or how does that work? Um, yeah, I say I'm like a, a definitely a driver shooter, but no, I love shooting threes. You, yeah, yeah. You take one step away, I'm pulling it. No question. Yeah. yeah. That's the, but that's like kind of like the new archetype of guard now. Like you see Curry's and you see those type of guys who have to be able to shoot. Yeah, yeah. Basketball is a very flashy sport in that regard. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, that's, that's why interesting. People fall in love with it. It's like a new style. It's like the glamour. Yeah, yeah. I see. I mean, the NFL is making that transition too, though. Like it's. I mean, it's funny enough. I was talking about it before, but the like the NFL is almost shifting into more of an individualized like player based system too, especially like with social media and stuff. Yeah, I think that's what really does it. Yeah, like the flashiness and the followers and the having to play to that. Do you like the idea of, uh, well, I mean, obviously I think most people do, but the whole uh, NCAA making it so that you can profit off your name now, like yeah. with social media and stuff? Definitely. I felt like mm. us not being able to profit, like what was what was the real yeah, reason? Yeah, like there's no real good reason yeah. as to why you can't. Like you really just decided to not let us 
make money off our name. Especially when you yeah. find out how much money some of these teams are making off, like ticket sales and season yeah. ticket sales and apparel that's right. and stuff like You're that. You're a commodity. Much, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Literally, th- that's their business. They make all that money off you got well, any sport until, I mean, about like a year ago where they finally changed it. But there really is no real concrete reason as to why you were never able to get paid as a college athlete before. Yeah. Or be able to profit off your name. You got high school athletes with like <clears throat> hundreds of thousands of dollars, some yeah. even millions of dollars, and like maybe if they couldn't profit mm-hmm. off their name, like yeah. they might be on IG with twenty K, mm-hmm. but like maybe their family don't got nothing. Yeah. So yeah. now now they got notoriety, mm-hmm. they got money in their pocket, like life is easier for them. I'm mm-hmm. sure you probably heard of the destroying guy. Have you ever heard of him? Destroying mm-hmm. the YouTuber. It was that was a very similar situation with him. He was a uh, D one kicker at uh, UCF, I believe, mm-hmm. and uh, they retracted his scholarship and kicked him off the football team for not deleting his YouTube channel when they asked him yeah, to. I love watching Destroying. Him yeah, a he's sick, and like, I like I don't even really always like like the content he's putting out. But one thing I really do fuck with about that guy is that like he didn't give up on that just because somebody tried to tell him that he wasn't allowed to do that. Yeah, which I mean that's very honorable to me because he. Got his scholarship taken away. He had to pay to go to school. And obviously, he ended up just stopped going to school after that. But he also got his dream of playing, like, professional football stripped from him. Mm. You see now, like, I mean, it really did work out for him in the sense that he's working with all the biggest name NFL players all the time, like, making YouTube videos, collaborating, this, that, and the third. And he got teams flying him out all the time to do media shit, which I think is pretty cool. Like, having him, like, do videos and all that stuff, like, with players. So, it all worked out for him in the end. But... That's like that's that shit. That's that college stuff. They don't yeah. let you uh, really be able to blossom into like the actual like business life you want to lead, which I think is insane. But I mean, you finally could now. Yeah, because that dude could have he could have possibly ended up in the NFL and yeah had the YouTube, and that would have been crazy. Yeah, he would have been making, and that's the thing too. Like he might have. I don't know like the full situation with like a scholarship, but he might have needed to be paying a little bit of money to go there. Like they're mm-hmm. not even allowing the kid to make money to survive which i think yeah. is pretty crazy like that's like where it gets fucked up because like obviously as a and football is a little bit different than basketball too like they're out there like i don't know what an actual practice schedule for you guys is like but as a football player like on top of class you're going out there like three times a day uh-huh. not even talking about lifting or film or anything like that so you re- as a football d1 college football player you cannot be expected to hold a job it's just impossible yeah, football is nuts bro so, they be having y'all go through I'll be talking to Malik. He's always tired. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, literally, like, you're just power napping. That's, like, what it is. You yeah. don't really have – I mean, you get a couple hours at night, if that. But everybody needs a little bit of free time, too. Like, you want to be able to enjoy yourself. Yeah. I yeah. just think it, it's pretty fucked up to that regard, how they do people. I've heard I've heard some wild horror stories about stuff like that. But, mm-hmm. I mean, I, th- I think it's great now that, like, they're actually pushing against that. It just took a very long time. Yeah. Which is pretty fucked up. So, yo, up, are, you, uh, are you, like, with – being able to be paid in the NCAA, are you thinking about that at all? Are you like I've I seen? Uh, I might have to expose him real quick. <laughs> my, my guy's going uh, viral on TikTok. This is you, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, you 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 did a couple of viral videos, right? That's Hank. Shout out to Hank. <laughs> Hank the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love Hank. So are you trying to are you trying to build a presence on online so that you could possibly leverage? the people that are following you and the people that are supporting you in some type of way, or are you just doing that for fun? Um, Kind of just for fun. And if, like, if I blow up and then I'm able to make bread off it, like, yeah. that would be lovely. But, like, yeah. if I don't, I'm chilling. Because a lot of athletes are going that way. Like, they're like, all right, so let me – I'm going to obviously prioritize my sport, but I'm going to create, like, a presence online as well mm-hmm. so that I could – I can kind of diversify myself in yeah. a way. Like, I think you've seen a lot of that with, like, the Ball Brothers. Yeah. You know, like, they brought a lot of attention to themselves before they were really going crazy. Mm-hmm. And that reaped so many dividends, like, in terms of who they were working with, different companies. Oh, yeah. And also just yeah. it was another form of exposure for them yeah. as as athletes. So I think that's really cool. I think yeah. that's a lot. Of, that's one of those things that a lot of people are considering now with, like, the Internet and – social media and especially like now that, that you can finally make money off of doing yeah. it because right. before you couldn't you right so I mean? like you could you know make a viral video and say nike reaches out to you and say you i really love what you stand for like you want to do this deal or something like that and yeah. meanwhile you're <clears throat> you're a division one athlete division one basketball player like yeah it's definitely an, an, op- an option and an opportunity yeah like the yeah. one there's a high school or like y'all know how i only wear crocs yeah, well, I don't know, but pink I Crocs. Y'all can't see it, but you're got the pink Crocs on. Sure. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, like I don't wear Crocs. Like, oh yeah. Like I wore. Uh, I was out with Gabe and Crocs Cole. Have, 
Right? Hit him up, Crocs. I've never seen a, a, yeah, like, a Croc with a strap that's, It's like the Croc Personally. easy. Five, I've never bro, seen Crocs like, like that. I spent like 175 on these. <laughs> like, <laughs> <I'm trying laughs> like, Whoa. I'm dead, so like, I only wear Crocs. I sold, I sold like probably like 80% of my Jordans. Wow. I was like, I'm not wearing them. I only wear Crocs because they're comfortable. Wow. Like, I actually wore shoes last night when okay. I went out. But yeah. like, before then, the last time I wore shoes like going out was probably like... <laughs> Over a full calendar year. Wow, Damn. what the fuck? And so, go ahead. What, so, you were talking about some kid. Yeah. So, there, Jeremy McCain. Um, I think he's committed to Duke. He's like one of the best players in the country. Ooh, he actually tough. has a Crocs. Uh, like he has a Crocs deal. Wow. Mm. Yeah. That's so, like, so you're trying to make it happen. Yeah, I mean, I definitely would. Like Crocs, few seats. Hit like, him up. Crocs. Hit him up. Dad, like, <laughs> like sometimes, like if we were going out to the club and they'd be like, "Yo, bro, like you have to wear shoes." Like I don't go. I'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna just really? stay home. Yeah, because bro, like I like to be comfortable. Right. Like, when I go out, like everybody be getting drippy. I like to wear what I like to wear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look nice, but I gotta be comfy, bro. So yeah. like, if I'm not comfy, I'm just gonna be tight the whole time I'm out. So I yeah. might as well stay home. I right. mean, basketball shoes are typically comfortable. You don't have like any like basketball line of like shoes you really fuck with? Um I mean, both my schools have been under armor. Oh, okay. So like I wear a lot of under armors, but like when I'm playing basketball, is like the only time I wear shoes. When I'm playing basketball or I'm in the weight room and yeah. I'm wearing my lifting shoes. But, like, other than that. Mm. I'm like props. you like that. Like, in the summer, I don't wear shoes. I mean, in the winter, you, I have to down here. But, like, I I, I don't wear shoes out ever either. Mm. I wear slides all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, you should drop some Yuri 5K clothes, bro. You think so? That'd be yeah. heat. Yes. If you that have actually, t-shirts. That might be. Like, like you know how you have, like, the uh, like the cartoon picture of you on mm-hmm. your Instagram? Uh, yeah. Whatever it is. Profile picture. Yeah. Imagine that. Like, a green shirt with, like. That or something on it. Like, that'd yeah, be cool, that bro. would be fire, low just, key. Just get your mind, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Just, I don't know. It'd yeah. be cool. Those I think business steps are cool. Lot, yeah, a lot I of just people, don't be thinking about stuff like yeah. that, bro. Yeah. yeah, I'm always on that type of time. <laughs> I'm always trying to, like, think about a scheme, basically. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, nah, I think, because people in Wilkesbury fucking actually, heavy. Actually, people told me I should start making shirts because you should. Um, so I You have, can wear them in warm ups, all that stuff. I have a shirt my freshman year. Um, we were playing Delaware, and I dunked on their big man. It was like a poster. Uh-huh. So I got the I got the picture on my shirt. That's pretty cool. And then yeah. like people was asking me, they was like, "Bro, like, can you give me the shirt?" And like I just use an app on my phone. It's called the Shirt App, and you literally just put the picture on the put the picture on the uh, shirt mm-hmm. and just pay for the pay for the shirt. They ship it to you. That's really? a good game. Yeah, so I, I started doing that. I think like I think like Raph, I think Raph and Riley have uh, shirts. Really? Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, we might have to utilize this yeah. shirt. Yeah. That's, like, what's next for us. Like, we've been, like, fucking around, like, big behind the scenes trying to get, like, clothing coming mm-hmm. out soon for the Go-Getters yeah. podcast. Because, I mean, a lot of people hit us up already saying that they would wear it and fuck with it. And that's just one way to start to make another stream of money, like, yeah. income for this. And we could just re-put all that money right back into this rather than coming out of pocket. Yeah, bro. A job is not it. Like, yeah, just working nice. some corporate federal yeah. ass job, like, that's not the way. Nah, not Can't at all. Can't be. I can't do it. Nah. Like, I, I haven't even, I've never had a real job, but, like, I've had, like, so I've trained kids at the rec and yeah. got paid for it. And, like, mm-hmm. I've, I was a, a referee at mm-hmm. William & Mary. Yeah. And, like, even then, bro, I'm, like, when I was training the kids, I loved it. Like, it didn't feel like a job. But, like, the mm-hmm. refing, I was ref, I wasn't refing basketball. I was refing, like, volleyball. <clears throat> God damn. Yeah. It's rough. Volleyball, soccer, like. Volleyball frat guys, like yeah, it was. they get down and dirty. <laughs> Come on, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, yeah, bro. bro. I worked, I worked a bunch of crazy jobs, like a ton of odd jobs, my whole life. And like that was kind of the transition for me playing football to not playing football was I moved out and I needed to support myself, you know. And so I kind of rooted myself in a way that I didn't foresee. And I couldn't keep up with, like, playing football and having to support myself, like, paying rent, paying bills, you know. So I had to make, like, a decision. Like, damn, I have to make money. Like, I have to survive. And um, being in that world, like, that grown-up world, it just Mm. sucks, bro. It's just not the way. You got to figure something out. You got to scheme on something. Like, you know, chase a dream. Like, have a dream and chase it and just figure it out. Figure it out by any means necessary because, bro, imagine just clicking away and <laughs> answering phone calls and come coming on. home and fighting with your, like, come yeah, on. Yeah, and, like, that's what people do. That's what, that's what some people do. So many when, like, people. Some people, like, 
go to school to do that. Yeah. But like, bro, that's not what you really like. That doesn't make right. you happy. Like, right. You're yeah. just probably good at it. Right. And you know, you can make a lot of money, but like. They got coaxed into believing that that was like the ideal, like American dream, like to live. You have a nice family. You have yeah. a nice job that pays the bills. You got a nice house out in some suburb somewhere and they get sold that dream. But it's really like a, it's a life filled of misery. Cause I don't think you ever really get to achieve your full potential that way. It's like a For system. Real. Gotta be a system, man. Yeah. Gotta be the accountants. Mm-hmm. In that well, we, we <laughs> were just talking about that the other day. Like a lot of people pick shit that they're, like they're genuinely interested in doing, but then they get co- or coaxed into some at some point believing that like that's not the route you should take. Maybe you yeah. should do this. There's yeah. more jobs in that field. Yeah. This job pays more. This, that, and the third. Like, and I think it, it, especially in like the college life, it leads people to like go to a college for four years studying some shit they genuinely don't care about. And then you see a lot of the time, like people will just go party their life away. Yeah. And they'll never get a job in that field and they're never getting that money that they were once guaranteed to make. I don't know. I just think that's there's no, there's no real fulfillment in that, at least for me. So yeah. I'd rather yeah. just try to get it any <laughs> other way that I could. Especially with all these like ways to make money now, the internet, bro. Like, yeah. So like you could do so many yeah. things. I mean, maybe that's just not your niche, like what you want to do, but yeah. like, yeah, it's, it's crazy how many ways you can make. There's money. probably people saying, "Yuri, basketball, it's it only lasts so long." Yeah, you should probably cut that out and find yourself a nice job. You know, accountant or probably, something. Probably like those dumb people. Shit. <laughs> like, I feel like some people just, I, you just have to ignore that shit. Just be like, nah, I really yeah. trust myself. Like, I'm gonna figure something out. Like, yeah, you're absolutely right. Like, I should have a plan B, but like, nah, this is nah, what I want to do. Fuck that, bro. This is fuck what, that. Nah, like, plan like, B's don't make life fun. I guess if fun. you want to think logically, like, I guess people should have plan B. Yeah. But like, really, like, I'm not people. I don't like. Yeah. Nah, I want to yeah. do what I want to do. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just gonna chase it. Plan B is for people who don't believe in plan A. Yeah. Probably. I mean, really. And there's, like, you could, just from the idea of playing basketball alone, you can make a plan B, C, D, and E out of that. Like, literally. you can fucking coach. Saying, yeah. You could literally do yeah, anything. Yeah, all the connections you know I'm mean? getting, bro, I can coach. Like, I could probably train little kids while I'm out here now. Like, you yeah. could. You legitimately can do that like, and make legitimate yeah. money doing that. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Division One basketball player. Like, you know, you want to come. You want, I'll, I'll train your son for an hour, three days a week. Mm-hmm. How much you want? 350 bucks. Deal. Kid from Dallas? Kid from Mountaintop? Yeah. <laughs> Every day. Yeah. What? Every day. No, that's right? Get them too. nice, too. Right. Even get the, them raw. Like, e- just become <laughs> a dog yeah. from Mountaintop. Even the clothing, too. Like, that's a whole other different avenue that I'm you could, you like, you could yeah. utilize basketball and, like, the fan base that you've built from, like, people attending your games and people from home that, like, watching you play and leverage that, like he was saying before. And you could do that with a lot of different things. You could do it with media. Like I said, you could sell clothing. Like, there's so many Gotta different Gotta get that route. Crocs deal, too, bro. I oh, see yeah, them like a, in, like, a commercial just, like, wearing the Crocs. Yeah, with the like, Crocs and the pink Crocs, Crocs too. I'm not gonna lie, bro. If Crocs reach out to me, I might cry happy tears. <laughs> For real? Yeah. That's nah, tough. I gotta get sponsored by, uh, um, damn it. Flossers, right? Is that yeah. what you were gonna I, say? I stay with, like, the toothpick flossers. Really? Yes, I gotta get one of them under my belt. For sure. And then, um, Applebee's. I got Applebee's. Yeah, I fuck Applebee's. <laughs> OD. I haven't been there in a minute, but Applebee's. Go is, uh, check out Applebee's, bro. They got the two for platter, bro. Oh, yeah. man. The fucking. Applebee's the strawberry lemonade goes yes, crazy, bro. Crazy. That shit saying. is too funny, <laughs> right? bro. I'm waiting for him to just start yeah. rolling it. I'm going to check the business email after this podcast. But no, nah, that'll be cool. Like, imagine like a, like a YC5K logo. Like some mm-hmm. cool shit right on the patch. Like. That's tough. People would rock it. Like really pins yeah. and shit. Especially if you're in your TikToks wearing it and like, yeah, yeah I'm saying, bro, like that. Yeah, should I be might a good think idea. I have to get on that because my pops make shirts too. So like, really, like, like I could literally go home right now and like, I, I don't know how he like makes the designs, but yeah. like, if I did know, I could literally just put it on the computer and like put the shirt in the machine and make the shirt. So wow. you have like one of those cricket machines. I don't know what it is, bro. I was actually just talking <laughs> wow. about that with my sister the other day. We might actually look into buying those. Yeah, you like download some kind of program, so it's kind of like similar to what you're talking about on a mm-hmm. computer. You could like generate. Or create your own logos, and I guess this, I mean, you need to buy the clothing as well, but you run it through this machine called a Cricut, and it'll basically screen print whatever you're trying to put on a shirt. So that's probably what it is. But yeah, well, actually, I was looking into buying one of those recently for this to like start getting like mm-hmm. pieces for me and him made. Yeah, we got a bunch of blank shirts we want to get made. But yo, uh, I remember when we played in the CYC, my dad used to tell me that he, <laughs> my dad and your dad were arch nemesis, bro. My dad, <laughs> yeah, they used to play at minor and have these. He, <laughs> so my dad says he could be lying. I don't even know. That's that's funny. But he always said that Yuri's dad, me and him used to go back and forth and all that stuff. So I think that's pretty yeah, funny. Yeah, and I yeah. know my pops be talking crazy. Yeah, too. that's what he said. Like, he always had a mouth. He always had a mouth. He always wanted to play basketball. <laughs> that's fucking but, uh, funny, man. It's crazy, man. That's crazy. You got these hoop dreams, man. And I know you will make it. I, I'm confident that you will make it, bro. Close, bro. And I'm confident, like. I think everybody is. Everybody like has mm-hmm. like you have a. I think you have a strong support system here. Yeah, in Wolf yeah definitely. You know, and a I'm lot of people know too. you. A lot of people know you, bro. A lot of people know you, talk about you, and only have good things to say. 
But even, like, behind all that, like, I could tell, like, within yourself, like, I think it, what it is more than anything is, like, that belief within yourself. Because without that, I mean, you're not going to get nowhere. You can get hooed and hawed by anybody. But, uh... No, yeah. that's just going to matter if you don't actually believe it yourself, which and it really does yeah, seem like you do. Your character you know is mean? solid. Like, you see a lot of people who have that potential, but they get crazy in the party life, and yeah. they, it's hard. Like, they can't keep themselves balanced almost. It was never, like, because I, I went from not going out to going out, and, like, when I didn't go out, I was chilling. Like, I was never, like, yeah. people are, like, oh, I have fear of missing out. Like, yeah. Like, bro, like, just, just just chill. Right. What do you, like? Right. But now that, like, I go out and stuff, it's not even, like, it's not really that exciting. Like, I can still, like, just not go out, stay yeah. inside. Well, when you're, follow- out. when you're following a passion that's more exciting, it's very easy or it's very easy to not trip about not going out or having yeah. that fear of missing out. Because, truthfully, I don't give a fuck about any of that anymore because of, like, how passionate I am with other things. Mm-hmm. I could fill my empty time with so many different things now that, like, I could be busy forever. Yeah. So I think that that makes it pretty easy as well. A lot of people don't really have passions or they haven't figured out what their passion is yet. So it's very easy to just go fuck off every weekend. Yeah, that's true. I was actually thinking about that the other day. Like people who don't have their passion, like it's kind of crazy. Cause like I've always, like I've never not wanted to play basketball. Yeah. So like, I've never just had that feeling mm-hmm. of like, like maybe like, what do I want to do after yeah. basketball? But never, what do I want to do? Well, I think those people are trying to, like, fill the void with something exciting. Because going out and partying, dealing with women, drinking alcohol, like, that shit's fun. Like, people find excitement and enjoyment in doing things like that. And, like, whether or not, like, you're going to ball out this game, like, that's very exciting to you. That's not very exciting to everybody else. So they try to fill that void with something that is exciting. And that, I mean, it's temporary excitement. But, I mean, it gets the job done for some people. Yeah. Which, I mean, it does suck. It's a harsh reality. But those people got to figure out what it is that they actually care about. And you're never going to find that just going out every weekend. Never. Yeah. Shit sucks. Good. Huh? Go good. I'm good whenever. Good. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, bro. Appreciate you coming on. Yuri, tell the people, man, like, where they could, you know, like, your Instagram, if you got anything else, like, uh, where they could, you know, view your highlights, anything. Like, just tell the people where they can find you at. Uh, My Instagram is underscore Yuri5K. Uh, my TikTok, Yuri Five K Part Two, no underscore. Damn, they got you. They deleted you. Yeah. Damn. And what it's happened? crazy because I have like I have like six. I almost have six point five uh, K followers on this account, and yeah. I'm my old one. I was at like five thousand nine hundred. So yeah. like, if they never deleted me, I would have been at ten K. And ten K is mm-hmm. when you can like, it's not guaranteed money, but you can start. Yeah. You yeah can, to be request. Partnered. Yeah. yeah you can request to if you're getting enough views. And you only have 10K, like, you can still make a little bit of money off TikTok. So. Yeah. We had a kid on the podcast. His name is Walter Conahan. Shout out to Walter. And he has, uh, right now, I think he might be at, like, 800K. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's and he's, crazy. That's he's, like, like, like his working job. With, with deals and, like, mm-hmm. brands and stuff like that. So Yeah, bro. You get cool. big on TikTok, like, yeah. you're set. Yeah, it's, yeah a, it's a weird life. But that's, like, kind of how it is, like, with YouTube in this regard, too. It's, mm-hmm. like, a very similar thing to TikTok. And you have to, like, hit a certain number or a couple different criteria, And you can start profiting off of YouTube as well. And we're very close. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's one thing that's cool. Like the moment the first like like a check from YouTube comes in, I think I'll literally. Cry. Oh man, it's gonna be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's gotta feel crazy. Yeah. I know it's gonna feel crazy. And it's it's very similar to what you're saying too, because like I've wanted to do that my whole life. I've wanted to like be an entertainer, like a YouTuber, made movies, or did anything to that regard my mm-hmm. literal entire life. So, you wanna like know what's actually thing. crazy, bro? So like I always wanted to go to the NBA, but like there was a point in time. Y'all remember like Chris Smoove? Y'all know who that is? Yeah, Chris Too Smooth. So, like, when, I fuck with that guy. Chris, yeah. When like I was watching 2K. Everything every day, I was like, yo, like, I want to be a YouTuber. Like, yeah. I want to stream, play video games. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I used to be a game head. Like, before I started, <laughs> before I started, like. That's what got me into it, too. Yeah, I love for video games when I was younger. I played a fuck ton of video games. So I was just watching YouTube all the time. God. Like, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So really, was, that's was, the breeding grounds for a lot of people. Like, that was not, like, it wasn't the start of YouTube, but it was, like, right around the time where, like, people found out that, oh, like, I could. I could be a kid playing video games or fucking off doing whatever shit that people would normally tell you not to do. And I can get endorsements and I can make money and I can get brand deals and I can do all this, that, and the third. And I luckily got into it right at the time where like that finally became a possibility for people. So Mm -hmm. like it really opened my eyes. Yeah, bro. But I was just going to say like, uh, I was, I was really thinking about starting a YouTube channel for a bit. Like I was like, yo, I'm a game like, uh, me and Jahabi be streaming sometimes on really? Twitch. Like, yeah, and we're bored. But, like, I'm never going to blow up on Twitch because, like, you have to, like, consistently go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have to consistently broadcast. And, like, I'd be tired, bro. I don't. I can't, like, mm-hmm. make a schedule and be like, yeah, this day I'm going to stream. Yeah. This day I'm going to. 
Did you talk to Jihad prior to this about coming on here today? Yeah. Okay, because I was going to say, I put a, I put something up on my story earlier, and I had no idea what he meant by this, but he replied, so I guess I'll ask you. This is what he said. I had no idea what it meant. <laughs> Shout out Jihad, by the way. Is it? My guy. That's what he sent me. I had no idea what he meant by that. What does it say? When waking up the goat every day, is it strenuous on your back? <laughs> <laughs> what? He's dumb funny. Yeah. No, what, it, what ahead, is it? Show, <laughs> it's something about like when waking up as the goat every day, does it get strenuous on your back or something <laughs> like that? And he's I had saying no like, He's saying like you should have like asked that question. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Well, no, that's, I didn't know what he meant by that. That's oh. why I never brought it up. And I didn't know if he knew that we were talking to you or not. Yeah, so. He's funny. That's mad funny. My guy. Yeah, that is hilarious. <laughs> Shout out Jihad. That's dope. Yeah, at first I was like, what? Like, Yeah. But nah, man. I mean, I think that's dope. I mean, even with like the Twitch shit, like if it's something that like, don't treat it like a job because that's like even one thing I try to take very serious with this. Like it's mm-hmm. not a job. This is like, a, it's I have a lot of passion behind it. So like I enjoy doing it regardless. I enjoy doing it at whatever time regardless. Something like that. Like that's something you do for fun. Like a, a lot of people, it's very hard to just get into streaming as like your profession and make mm. that like a profession it is like you're saying it's a it's a grind it really is you got to be streaming for hours a day you got to be very innovative like you got to be doing new things that other people aren't doing yeah. it's definitely hard but one thing you can do is leverage like the ability that you already have for some reason people love watching athletes play games yeah, i don't know I don't what know the why. fuck that is i do too i won't, I'm not gonna lie yeah but like athletes specifically like people enjoy watching athletic people just sit down and play video games i really don't know why but I mean, mm. you could easily transition that into, you know, gaming at some point. Fucking, yeah. You can make a lot of money doing that too, man. I mean, I know, like, at some point we'll do something, like, streaming related. Mm-hmm. Whether it's gaming, whether it's just sitting down, like, cracking jokes with the audience and shit like that. I don't know. I just think it's fun. Yeah, I like the, I like what that Kai Green guy does. Yeah. <clears throat> he just hangs out with his friends and streams and, like, cracks jokes and stuff like that. Fucking Kai like, Green? I don't think I know who that is. Is it? <clears throat> is it uh, He's oh. big on TikTok. Is he, it the guy that makes the music? He made the song. About? Yeah. Bust Down Rolly Avalanche. He got a, it's, that's oh, not his oh, actual oh, name. Oh, oh. Him. Huh? Is his last yeah, Kai. It's like Kai. Uh, Sanat, I, I think, Sanat. right? Yeah, I don't, know. Sanat. I don't know how to say it. I just yeah. be saying Kai. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah my brother dumb. watches that guy. Oh, he's dumb yeah, funny. shit like that. It's cool. Like, and I mean, Duke you got a, yeah, like a group Dennis. of friends that are funny that just sit down and talk shit anyways. Like, that's, that's literally what I said about that in, or this and like streaming games because I used to stream games too. Mm-hmm. It's like if you're going to be doing it anyways, like if you're going to be just playing games anyways or having interesting conversations anyways, why not record it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's very easy for people to like, for it to catch on and catch traction. As long as you're consistent with it, I think people will fuck with it regardless of what it is. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, man, I mean, fucking, this is a great thing uh, or a great podcast that we had here. You definitely got to, you know, send us that schedule whenever you get it. And uh, did you already tell the people like your social media yeah. and shit? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then shit, I mean. Check you know, on YouTube too. Yuri Covington, this is a great one. Shit will be out uh, two Thursdays from now. So right. we'll, we'll give you the ex- exact day, but. Much love, everybody. See you at the top, bro. Peace. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh Uh, Whatever. (laughs) Peace out, guys. Peace.